Andy, thanks for thanks for joining me for a cup of tea. Uh, yeah, it's always, no always always a pleasure to, to to spend ten minutes with you. Um, so you're CTO of Big Hand. Should we should we just talk about Big Hand for a second? I mean, what you what what struck me immediately was it's in a very unique <clears throat> it's a very unique company. You're you have a, a very well established uh, portfolio of products specifically targeted at the legal profession. Yeah. Um, a, ho a whole range of these products, <clears throat> and the the you want to transform all of them into and um, uh, modernize them all into the cloud. Is that is that is that fair enough to say? Uh, yeah, we we are. Yeah, we, we, our market is predominantly legal. We do have um, a good presence in healthcare as well, but yeah, legal is is you know, the largest bit, largest market that we're in. Um, and it, traditionally, yeah, our, our software is uh, desktop on-premise software. Um, that was, uh, you know, basically both of our markets wanted software delivered in that way. They were comfortable with it being delivered like that. They had the team set up for that. They had the infrastructure to be able to, you know, to look after that. Um, so we, we met that need and demand, but obviously the world, world is changing or has changed. Um, and these both markets are now very much, you know, ready uh, for cloud enabled, you know, software. Um, and everyone moves at different paces. So some firms are, yeah, are, are very much, you know, already fully cloud native. Others are probably at the very start of that journey of you know, thinking about this. But the, the, you know, the, the underlying you know, nervousness is, is security. But I think what's happened you know, over the last five to 10 years is everyone's got very comfortable. We're all using things in the cloud all the time. We trust, you know, the cloud and there are certain brands that we trust as well. So you know, Amazon is trusted, Azure is trusted. Um, yeah, so there, there are, there's a lot more trust that actually the cloud is secure. You can use it safely. Um, and that has helped with you know, law firms and, uh, you know, healthcare, which are both nervous about that and rightly so. Um, but they've got very comfortable with it now. And you know, for law firms, you see their document management systems are now, you know, the cloud versions of those of them are, are the most popular in terms of growth. Um, and if there's if you're storing your documents, that's that's you know crown jewels. So that that's meant that you know both our markets are very ready uh, for us to, to deliver software in that way. Um, so yeah, we're now we're we're on a transition, you know, to offer basically to our customers best of both ways. You, you can continue with on-prem if you wish, and um, that's perfectly fine. Um, but for those that are ready for the cloud and want to go on that journey, then we'll be offering them, you know, cloud in whatever form that they wish. So whether that's private cloud, uh, multi-tenanted cloud, um, or even if they've got their own Azure domain and they wish to still look after it that way, we can deploy our software into uh, their own uh, Azure domain. So we want to remain <coughs> flexible. So you know, because lots of you know, different firms have different strategies, different ways they want to uh, um, you know, consume their software. Um, but we, we as a vendor and as a yeah, a key legal vendor um, want to make sure that we are delivering the software in the way that our customers want it to be delivered. I think there's, yeah, there, there's a second piece to it as well, which is around how people are working um, within within uh, firms and NHS trusts, and that's a uh, people want to be able to work wherever they are. Um, we used to only work when we we're at our desk, and we're now doing our work, and we're at, yeah, that, that's when we do it. But there's so much more flexibility now that people want to be able to do it on their phones, you know, on their tablets, on their laptops, on wherever it is. And by building uh, you know, responsive websites, which is what we're in the process of doing, uh, we're able to deliver a great experience on whatever platform they're actually using it on. And you're not tied to being uh, on the company network. You can use it where, wherever you wherever you wish, giving you know, that yeah um, that you know, flexibility to support you know, different ways of working. So yeah, it's a big big um, big transition, big piece of uh, you know, um, investment into big hands to make that happen. But really critical for for us and our customers that we do that at this time. Okay, no, thank you. I mean, you you it was very clear again from from. from day one that 
Big Hand had a very specific culture and got a lot of long-standing, super trusted people there. And you were very, um, you asked a lot of questions about how it would work coming together. And, you know, you, 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 you came out <clears throat> to Vossov to meet uh, a lot of people and just talk and just, just you know, get a feel for, for PGS. Um, and I think, it, you know, you came out because Steve Law from Geocom had made a recommendation, didn't he? Which was very kind of him. Yeah. Um, but that whole, you know, your culture and when you gave me a tour of your office in London, you know, I, I, there was a very much a sense of closeness and togetherness. Um, uh, and, you know, you obviously wanted to preserve that. I mean, do you want to, you know, mm -hmm. What, what, yeah, what it, it, big, big Hands is, always a, is a business that um, has always had and is very proud of um, the culture that it has. You know, everyone at Big Hand is known as a big hander. It's kind of something you belong to. And you know, even even when you know, as people move on and, and go and go and do something else, they are they they're still for forever a big hander because they they've worked as part of this business. And I think that's not just a you know, a, a phrase or a term. I think people generally feel it. They feel attached. They will they 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 will forever be you know, how's big hand doing? Um, you know, how are the team doing at big hand? And you know, socially, people always come back to you know social events. Um, and I think that's been a really key part of. You know, Big Hand's success is that feeling of you know it's a fa you know, we're a family. You know, we're, we're trying to do something together. Um, there's very little you know, infighting at Big Hand because we all know what we're trying to achieve together. You know, to get somewhere, we value very highly. Uh, uh, you know, we recognise that we are all about the people. Yeah, you know, you're only, we're only as good as the people that are working within within. The, you know, the family of Big Hand. Um, and that was one of the reasons why, you know, as we evolve and change and we get, you know, we get bigger, you know, we've gone from 100 people to 200 people, we probably go to 300, 400 people. We don't want to lose that. Um, and therefore, when we're selecting partners to work with, the culture of that partner is really important because they're going to be a big part of you know, how we grow and how we evolve and how we work together. Um, so in order to retain that culture and not see it start to, to reduce, um, then it's really important that we work with uh, businesses and, and suppliers that have a similar, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but a similar culture and a similar feeling and a similar care for the people that work within their business. Because ultimately, you know, I'm a firm believer that you know, happy people are productive people um, and we all come to work in, in, in with that mindset. We're looking forward to it. We want to go in there and therefore we're going to, we're going to enjoy what we do. We're going to be productive. We're going to be that that's going to create success for everybody. Um, so that was you know, one of the reasons why coming out to uh, Roslov was really important for us. Um, we need to see the people we need to see the, you know, the offices we need to get a sense of how um, people are engaging with each other not just with us but you know how, how they working together when you know if we're if we're not there and we're just a uh, fly on the wall looking is, is that culture going to be you know a collaborative you know warm culture where everyone feels part of something um and is excited about you know coming into work that that's that's what we try to create a big hand is that you know everyone is excited about what we're doing we're doing interesting things we're changing we're evolving we're moving fast we're um we're a relatively small company in the grand scheme of things you know 200 people company is not big um so we can be dynamic and we can move in different directions and we can but you know as we do that we're able to create some pretty amazing opportunities for people. And that sort of comes back to something you were saying earlier about we've got people in the business that have been there from, you know, being a you know, graduate, they've been with the company for 15 years. Um, and in that time, they've experienced lots of different things, lots of different areas. And ultimately, they, they've ended up as you know, a very senior manager, you know, within the business. And that, 
that helps to retain the culture because they've lived it for 15 years. So then when they're bringing people in, they're bringing in people that uh, are aligned to that culture, which you know helps you to continue to build it rather than as you're building, you're, you're slowly, slowly diminishing it. And I think you know, culture is, uh, is something that maybe isn't um, talked about strategically at ops boards. What, it, what is our culture and what are we going to do about it? And, and, and that is probably a, a, a bit of a miss, really, because it's actually one of the most critical things you need as a business um, you know, to be successful. If you take your culture for granted, then it will, it will diminish. You've got to spend time on it. You've got to understand it and you've got to understand how you know, important it really is um, for your success as a business. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I mean, we started at the start. It, it all kicked off at the start of COVID, didn't it? Mm. We had lots of in, interesting conversations yes. right then. And I think we 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 all decided, you know, let's let's press on and and mm. start together and, and see how it felt. But then, since then, you've you've obviously executed quite a significant plan off off the back of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, COVID was obviously um, created some questions about, yeah, can we can we do this? Can we um, successfully bring on a partner? when we can't you know physically get together when we can't you know fly a team out to poland or fly our teams into poland we can't build that bond with the teams you know in that way you know is that going to be successful i think one of the reasons why we had confidence to move forward was because we already felt like culturally we we haven't got to learn you know culturally how each other because the, the cultures were reasonably aligned and that gave us some confidence that we would be okay um, without having being able to do the normal you know, um, physical things with people get, you know, getting together, um, going for dinner, um, going and bowling or yeah, whatever we might have done to you know, bring teams together. Um, but we felt comfortable about that. And yeah, the reality has been that um, the teams have, have bonded very quickly. Yeah, and as we brought on new teams from PGS and brought them in to work with the teams at Big Hand, I think they have immediately bonded because they can sense the the energy and the desire to do good things. And yeah, that's really important for Big Hand. And I think if you have if you're trying to bring in a partner who maybe doesn't have that and it's a bit um you know, it's a bit nine to five for them to sort of come in, just do their job and, and go, that doesn't fit with with the energy that's coming from from Big Hand, which I think PGS just slotted into that, and the teams therefore felt like you know, that you know it's not a PGS team anymore. Yeah, you know, they're as you know, we all, all our teams are named after chilies, so every one of the PGS teams is named after a chili as well. So they're not there's there's not a well that's a PGS team. That's well that's the Cherry Bomb team. Yeah, you know, and that's the Nagabon team, and that's the Padron. Team. Yeah, that's how they're um, you know uh, talked about and seen because of that. I think and it comes back to the culture. The cultural fit was was good, and that that's that's assisted us significantly during what is a pretty challenging time to be bringing on you know a major partner. But it's gone really well um, because of that. I think. No, that's good. I mean, we we we've. We feel, you know, we have a quite a strong software craftsman model, and it's about sharing our clients' journey and, you know, doing doing whatever it takes as a as one team to, to get there. Um, it's not always easy, is it? But I like I like no, what you no, said, no. I like what yeah, you said it's about technology. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's complex, um, and um, yeah, it's the detail. I think another, yeah, one other thing that I think is really helpful for us is there's an openness on both sides. So we've always been very open as a technology team, a big hand, you know, we want to learn, we want to listen to everyone else, we want to bring in other expertise, we want to, we want to um, be in a position where we don't think that we, we, our way is the best way all the time. We know there are ways you can improve and be better. Um, and certainly on the cloud transition, you know, it's uh, we're moving into a different space. We've obviously got a lot of expertise on the teams already, but 
having the PGS expertise joining us has, has hugely boosted you know, our, our abilities and our confidence um, in the direction you know, that we're going going in. Um, so that that's been a, you know, another real benefit to us of, of that of that partnership. Um, and I think you know the PGS way um when you you might be looking at the way that we're going and actually you've been there and done that a number of times and maybe that wasn't quite the right way is not a well you shouldn't do it like that it was it's more of a you know there's, there's some other things you could think about and i think because we're open to that that's helping us to move you know, you know direction um and, and come to the right right landing place so again that, that you know that's that's working well for us you said um after one of our meetings something that was very powerful for us and i think we're going to we're going to take that within our messaging forward which was um the partnership between big hand and, and ourselves as us working together has really made you think and act differently mm -hmm. and you know that's particularly you know particularly powerful statement could we you know, should, should we just paint the picture and talk about that, if that's OK? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think we, Big Hand, I certainly see this as a partnership, not as in a customer supplier. This is a long term relationship that we want to have in place. And I think the reasons why it changes our thinking and, and, and our you know, the ways that we are working is it, it creates a, a, an opportunity for us to do something about something quickly. It creates real flexibility for us. So when we're thinking about, you know, could we change an area of our product? Could we add something to our product? You know, those things are normally discussions where you have you know, one option, which is looking at the number of resources you have and deciding if we're going to allocate them here or we're going to allocate them there. And actually what it's enabled us to do is to say actually we you know rather than having to make the choice between two really important things and you can only do one of them actually being able to say we can actually do both um yeah obviously it's going to cost some money but we have the ability to be able to flex and turn that on so we can go and do you know the the, the, you know, the second thing so we can do both um if you're in a situation where you're just working with your internal teams you as much as you want to do both of those things, the challenge is you're then going to have to go and recruit the team. You're going to take your time to do that. Um, and there's suddenly there's a whole load of barriers in, in place of, of trying to actually make that happen. Whereas if you've removed those barriers and it really just comes down to, right, OK, well, we've got these two things. You have, we have a process internally, which probably most companies do, where we're looking at return on investment. So the cost to do it, you know, three hundred thousand pounds the payback is a million clearly you want to do that another one cost is three hundred thousand pounds the payback is a million you want to do both of these things um so that the relationship that we have with pgs has enabled us to be um uh, more aggressive in in the things that we want to go after and in, in our ability to grow our business but because we can go after more things not at the sacrifice of something else um yeah a big, big hand has grown extraordinarily over the last, you know, probably 10 years. Um, and going from a single product to you know, a multi-product portfolio means that you know, you've now got, without that flexibility, you have enormous challenge because um, there's always something else that's screaming for those resources and you've got finite resources. You know, everyone you know, ha has that situation. It's how do you, how can you, yeah, make those sensible decisions about where you're going to apply those resources and have some flexibility to say actually we can do these things as well if we, if we've got the you know the capital to support it so it's it really does change your ability to um to get to go after more than one thing um and for most businesses i think you're in a position where you've got 10 things you can go after and all of them are really valuable but you're picking two because that's the only resources you've got uh, yeah, so I think yeah, the the way that the teams have come on from you know from from PGS, the way that we're working together, um, it's given confidence right across the business actually, you know, from the board downwards that um, yeah we can 
transition from where we are to where we want to be. You know, th these are pretty, you know, big, scary things that you're, you're, you're taking on. Yeah, technology is tough. We all know that. We work, we work in technology. It's complex. It's difficult. Um, there are many, many challenges to it. But um, you know, the the partnership has given Big Hand, you know, the board upwards confidence that we can make this happen. We can do it. Um, we've always we've always had a big hand. We believe um, it's one of our you know our values. We believe in each other, um, so we always believe we can. But I think the relationship with PGS has just lifted that level that we know we definitely can. You know, if we if we need to go, if we need to expand a bit further to make it happen. We can expand a bit further to make it happen. If we need to bring in some extra um, consultancy and expertise, then it's there for us. It's on tap. We can. We can we talk to you. We already have about you know, certain areas where we need um, some guidance to, to validate you know some ideas that we have and our thinking behind what we're going to do. Um, we're able to say, well, can we talk to the your your expert architect in this particular area and validate you know the direction that we're going in? That immediately gives confidence and credibility to what we're doing and the decisions that we're making. Uh, so. Yeah, I think yeah, it's like I said, it's created that confidence that you know we we we're very sure we're going to get where we want to get to, um, and that's that that's that's huge uh, for for us as a business will make a huge difference to us and to our customers. Oh, that's great. I mean, you just what what so you've just changed investor, haven't you? That's yes. how was that? What was the you know, what can you share with me about that? Uh, been a good. It's been a great process. Um, you know, we obviously this all happened during pandemic as well. Um, so yeah, it's all been done remotely, which is probably uh, you know relatively unique that these these things don't normally happen that way. Um, but yeah, we've we've been we've been looked after by BDC for a long time, very successfully, um, and that, that was a great relationship. Um, but as you know, with all PE, it moves in a cycle. Uh, and um, we were delighted to be uh, working uh, with Levine, with Levine Lightman, that have um, yeah, invested in Big Hand, believe in our, you know, our strategy, direction, and future. Um, can see that we can, um, you know, make a, you know, a big in, in, um, imprint on the legal um, tech market and really help our customers with our two major themes, you know, profitability and productivity. That's what we're trying to, you know, really help them with. Yeah, you know, they, we believe in that and they believe in it as well. Uh, the exciting thing you know, at this stage, you know, of a, an investment cycle is that we're all looking at the, at the future um, and how are we going to get there and what investments do we need to make and which levers do we need to pull and Levine are right there with us, you know, supporting us on that. Um, and the end, you know, yeah, that's where this partnership is very strategically important to us. You know, as we work together with Levine and we identify the areas we want to go after and we want to pull the lever, we have a lever to pull. You know, it's called PGS and we pull it and that enables us to, you know, to really accelerate. Um, yeah, so yeah, moving from you know, BDC to Levine has been a very, very smooth process. It's been great to get to know Levine. Yeah, team and you know, their thoughts and you know, the value they can bring to us um, will, will be huge. You know, US is a huge market for us. We've got pretty you know, big footprint there already. They're US based. Um, so I can see that they're going to help us a lot you know, in, in the US market. So yeah, exciting stuff um, you know, for Big Hand um, and, uh, and our future direction. Okay. I mean, as a C as a CTO of this uh, of Big Hand, what are your biggest challenges now? Do you think what's the what what keeps you awake at night at night? Uh, probably a multitude of things. I think if you're CTO and uh, oh, yeah CISO as well, so responsible for security of the business. Um, so yeah, sometimes I wonder how I sleep at all. Um, but. Um, yeah, the, the, yeah. The big things, you know, for us, uh, and to be honest, these are not these are these are big challenges, but they're exciting things for us to be doing. So the cloud transition is is a is a big thing that we are now doing. We're on that journey. We've got an eighteen month plan. 
um, we need to make sure we we nail that. It's very very important for us and our customers that, that we're successful in that, and we will be. Um, but yeah, th these are, these are not insignificant things that we're doing. There's going to be a lot of challenges along the way. There always are um, when when, we, when you're building technology. Um, but I'm you know, the reason why I can sleep is because I know I've got the right team you know, you know, to to work work on, and we've got the right you know, partnerships to support us as well. Um, and ultimately, that that is really what enables me to sleep. I know I've got a, an amazing team that yeah you know, that, that's working with me on this, and we will get there with that team. Um, that that yeah you know, that is ultimately what keep, what allows you to actually sleep is knowing that you've got the experts in the right places that are you know really on their game. Um, so yeah, the cloud transition is is a is a challenge um, definitely. We've got as we go through this process, we're going to go through some fairly big changes in the way that we work as well. You know, we're moving from a you know, enterprise on-prem software. Um, we're moving you know, cloud native. We'll have for a lot. We're going to have a lot of customers in different, um, you know, different models. You know, for for you know for a long time into the future, and we need to be transitioning so we understand how we work within a you know a SaaS world. Um, and how that changes roles, how it changes how we need to be thinking and acting. So there's there's lots to be done there. And if you think about the technology side of it, um, we've been an agile um, department you know, for a long time. Um, but as you move to cloud native, that redefines that agility. Um, so you're moving into a you know, DevOps world where you're you know, delivering at the end of every two weeks and then as you get more and more um, refined with that maybe you're delivering every every day into your into into environments that brings a completely different uh yeah way of working way of thinking so so there's tra transitions to be made there as a technology department um which we're on that journey already we're already doing things there and um you know, members of pgs team are yeah, helping us with, with, with that vision of where we're going to get to. Uh, so those are challenges. Um, security is always obviously one that keeps a CTO awake at night. It is uh, an ongoing battle out there. Um, I have a great team again. I know that we're doing all the right things and we just need to keep doing that. Um, so that, that, you know, that enables us to feel comfortable as a business that we, we're doing uh, everything we can in order to protect uh, you know, both the business and our customers. Um, uh, but yeah, security is one that you, you know, never sleeps. So you need, you've got to stay on top of that. You're never done. Um, so yeah, these are probably the, you know, the, the main things, um, you know, the big challenges. Um, but as I said, it's all about having the right team. Uh, if you've got that, then you, you can still get some sleep at night. Good, 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 good. Oh, what else? We've got eight minutes left, Andy. What should we? What would you like to chat about? <laughs> well, um, what have, what haven't we chatted about? <laughs> well, I think we've covered, we've covered quite a lot of ground, really, in terms of you know what what Big Hand are up to and you know, how PGS is supporting Big Hand, you know, to make you know, make a lot of really big things happen for us. Um, what about what about things that haven't gone quite so right? Can we? Is there anything that that that, that or people not kind of gelling together or you know really sort of real stuff right you know what what's what could have gone better um that's a good question i i'm probably going to struggle to answer that at the moment because uh, um there's nothing that springs straight to mind um i think yeah if we weren't in pandemic situation where we're all isolated working remotely then we we could have done things differently you know we would have obviously uh you know brought teams together we would have done you know those different bonding activities which you know would it would have um obviously bonded them quicker and the relationships would probably be, you know be stronger faster and you know that's not to say they're not great and good but i think they would be in a you know, a better and stronger position you know, than they than they already are, um, but what with you know what can we do about that? That's that's completely out of our control. So um, I think the things that are within our control, what could we have done better? Um, hard, hard to pick anything out really at the moment. Uh, I think 
you know, from a big hands point of view, um, some of the things that we maybe could do could do better, you know, is we we've obviously been understanding a lot about how PGS work and you know how does PGS build up a new team? How do you resource it? How do you do those things? Because you know, it'd be nice to think, well, you just press the button and the team just arrives. Um, but I think we need, you know, we've spent some time trying to understand how that happens because it's important that we understand your challenges, you know, so we can try to help with that and support it as much as we, we can. And maybe we could have um, delved into that a bit deeper, a bit earlier. Uh, but that's really probably the only thing I can really pick out as something we could have done you know, much better. You know, you know, the software consultancy challenges are whenever you've got a few Java people, everyone wants .NET. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that. That's the that's the usual challenge. When it, when you've got a few AWS people, everyone wants to do. <laughs> yeah, it's that. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, sod's law, isn't it? That what? Yeah, whatever you've got is not what people want. Um, <laughs> that's just but, a, just Murphy's law, there, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. That's just how it is, I guess, isn't it? Um, so yeah, but it's interesting because it's. I think it's important that you know. Not, I know you, PG is obviously very focused on understanding big hand or their customers, um, but I actually think it's important for the customer to understand you know PGS and you know, the challenges that a software consultancy has, how the pandemic is affecting them. Um, you know, these are important things to understand because if you do, then you have the opportunity to try to help rather than making that challenge harder for, yeah. for the consultancy and if it's a partnership then you want to make it as easy as possible for your partner to be able to help you so i think that's that is an important part well hopefully hopefully we've been pretty transparent about how how we do things i mean mm. it's the usual story you know you want to be able to plan accurately ahead and and scale carefully you know, we're not we're not the sort of company you come to for three hundred people tomorrow. It's, no. it's 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 small teams of software craftsmen who who kind of get it and know how to work together. That's that's really. Well, I think that's really obvious. PGS are not a body shop. Um, you know, the PGS are, and and I've seen this through through the every interaction we've had through the different people that we've brought onto the teams. That each each is good at what they do. Each is a good, you know, has been a good communicator. Understands, you know, the ways of working. Isn't surprised by, you know, that we're using less. Is actually pleased that we're using less um, and excited to be, you know, working with a you know, business that's, that, that's using, you know, that as a as a way of scaling Scrum. Um, and I think that that's that comes through that it isn't a body shop where you just go well we've got 200 people working for us over there um this is much more of a you know we know who those people are it's a relationship um and i think that comes through in in the teams that we, we're, we're working with at the moment lucinda is pretty impressive isn't she she's um so she's your product manager is that correct? Yeah, she's a uh, head of product delivery. Um, so she looks after all our you know, product owners um, and you know, now the, you know, the business analyst that we have at PGS as well. So making sure we are building the right thing, basically, um, uh, an absolutely critical part of the job. You know, we could be building things beautifully and crafting them. If they're not the thing the customer actually wants and needs, then you know, you know, no one's winning in that situation. So yeah, she looks after that part of the, of the business. Um, so yeah, she's been a, a, been a great uh, person to add to the team. She's been with us for three years now, which actually uh, time flies. It doesn't seem like that long. Um, but yeah, Lucinda's made a yeah, huge difference to her. She brought a lot of experience of product management and product owning from previous companies. Uh, she's worked with companies that have gone through similar transitions that Big Hand are going through. So um, big support to us in her experience there. Uh, that, that's helping us as well. And she's very, she's very much a you know, people person as well. She's very, she's very um, um, caring. She's very keen to make sure she understands her team, coaches, guides, directs, um, 
you know, what you've seen from the you know from the blogs that she's doing now she's she's very open and helpful she's trying to put information out there so everyone no matter what company you're in could be a better product manager or better product owner uh, better product marketeer she wants to she wants to share that knowledge you know to help everyone oh, brilliant yeah she's very passionate about it and a podcast is brilliant so we've um we're trying to give that a bit of a push as well and, and give that as much support as we can as well so yeah no brilliant Andy, that's that's my hour. <laughs> that is your hour. Yeah, you, you've got your money's worth. I, I've got more than my money's worth. Thank you so much. <laughs> We've got to meet for a beer soon. <laughs>